Hi, I'm James Warren from OA Systems, and today we're going to take a look at Playbooks and the Sales Hub and Dynamics 365 customer engagement. So Microsoft have set up a series of capabilities that are only found inside the new unified interface, and Playbooks is one of those pieces of functionality. The other thing that it is important to be aware of is this is only available in the admin settings when you are in the Sales Hub. Uh, and also only available to users who have the playbook user role set up. So if you are in the sales hub, uh, like mentioned, and we go down here, you'll see that in the app settings, um, there is the ability to set up playbooks under playbook management. And I've gone in and set up uh, two different versions of the playbook templates, uh, one where the tracking progress is enabled and one where it isn't. And there's a very specific reason for doing that, um, as they give you two different views of how the system works. One of the things you do have to go in and do is set up playbook categories, but these are really just titling. Um, and then when you go and set up the playbook templates, as you can see here, um, you are able to do a couple of things in these templates. So uh, once you've selected the category, in this case, decision maker leaving, um, you select whether you want the progress tracked or not. And one of the interesting things about um, not tracking progress, it means that the playbook can automatically track the activities against the particular entity, so account, opportunity, lead, contact, um, that you're creating this playbook against. If you do track progress, it will only track the activities against the playbook. And we'll show you what this looks like in a minute. So you'll see in this case here, we've got an estimated duration of uh, approximately a month for this playbook to play out. Um, I've activated it so that it's showing up on the account, the opportunity and the lead. And you'll see there are a couple of other records you can put it on at the moment. Uh, and what happens, is when we activate the playbook, this is going to create a phone call, appointment, and a task. And when we're setting this up, it does ask us how many days after creating the playbook does each of these activities happen. And what you'll see when I run this, this will cascade a series of tasks in this case so that we can confirm that the contact or the decision maker uh, at the organization is leaving, arrange an appointment to follow up with them, and also then have a task so that we present all the open proposals to that particular person who's come into the new decision-making role. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna go and jump into an account. Um, and we'll just select one at random, so Alpine Ski House. And as you can see, if you come and click on the menu up the top here, we've got the ability to launch a playbook. Now, because I've configured the playbook so that the other one I showed in the settings before only runs against opportunities, you'll see we can only select the decision maker leaving playbook from here. So I'm going to take that and launch it. So as you can see, when we trigger that playbook, it created three new activities in the system uh, just now a call to confirm that the changes have happened, that meeting um, to do an introduction and a review of all open proposals. And that means the contact can, at our end, can go through and complete those activities as they're done. Uh, and that enforces that best practice. Now what we're gonna do is go and jump into an opportunity and have a look at what happens when we've tracked a playbook. And you'll see in an opportunity, it's up on the taskbar up here to launch a playbook. And because we'd activated the decision maker leaving playbook um, on opportunity and the following op up opportunity close, both of those options appear at the top of the toolbar. So I'm going to go and select the following up opportunity close. And you'll see the timeline here doesn't show up those new activities. This is actually because we're tracking those activities against the playbook and not against this opportunity. So you, to be able to find them, you actually have to come in and look at your activity list. So I'm going to go in and, and filter by the next seven days or earlier and scroll right to the bottom of that list. And you'll see that the latest two activities we've got on that list, well, not the latest two actually, uh, but there is a review with delivery team and kickoff meeting, which were the two activities that I'd put inside 
the opportunity close. Um, and if we go in here and complete that task as done, we'll show you why that's working that way in Playbook. So what we're going to do is jump back into the settings area and go look at those Playbook templates. And you'll see I've drilled into the um, following opportunity close and gone to the monitoring tab. So I have actually um, completed one of these earlier when I was setting this up. Um, and this one is actually the one that we're running just now. And you'll see it is regarding that opportunity at this level. Um, and if we go in and click on this particular playbook, you see in here it gives us some monitoring inform information. So yes, this is the name of the playbook. This is how many total tasks there are, how many are completed with some visualization of how much there is to go, which particular opportunity that's being tracked against, and a bit of a timeline around what's going on. So if we do want to go into that particular opportunity, there is a way to see that there are playbooks active, although it's not showing up in the timeline. And you'll see if we go click on playbooks, um, it does actually show up in here. And if you do want to, you can put that subgrid on the front page. But really, that's just a quick run through of what playbooks are, how they work, and also some of the differences between uh, monitoring a playbook and not monitoring a playbook. We can go and have a look at a range of ways to configure those activities and triggers for the event. And one of the things I haven't done in this example is create a workflow that when we set the status to close, it can trigger uh, that playbook to create those activities. So you can actually do quite a lot with playbooks and forcing best practice for your team. Um, that could also be replicated by workflows, but this just gives you a bit more of ability to um, see that what's happening, define it from an internal admin point of view where somebody's not going into the back end of the system with administrator level settings, um, and also the ability to do that monitoring. So if you have any questions about how playbooks work or other things you can do with Dynamics 365, please uh, get in touch with us at OA Systems and keep an eye out for our other videos. Thanks.